Mike Sharp and I have um, dug into many, many, many cases and operations at the jail, and so this is just one, but one we felt it was important for you to know about, and not just know about through words, but also um, we want to show you a little clip um, of what occurred. So today, um, I have charged four individuals for a jail assault that occurred on a guard that occurred on August the 26th. Those individuals that were charged um, are, um, are Stephen Courtney, Rodney Rogers, Osiris Mead, and Tyrone Willard. Um, one of those individuals faces a second charge uh, for another assault on another jail guard, and that is uh, Mr. Sneed. So he has actually two separate complaints filed against him, and one, um, one of those assaults um, is a misdemeanor. The charges today, however, are for the Class E felony um, of assault. I'm sorry, it's been enhanced from an E felony to a Class D felony. Because of the victim involved here, I mean, it's a special victim, and that uh, allows us to do an enhancement in this case. And so these are now um, our Class D felonies that each one of these inmates face. Um, we also thought it was important, uh, Mike and I talked about um, what other steps can we take. Obviously filing charges um, is a good step, but we knew we needed to do more than file charges. So I think it's a very important message um, for those awaiting trial in the Jackson County Jail to know. Um, when these charges arise, uh, your space may change. You may get moved to a new facility. And so that is what we're working on right now. I know that um, Mike Sharp is working on moving these individuals to different facilities, right? And one of the um, benefits about being in your Jackson County Jail is that it's much easier, perhaps, for your family uh, to come visit you. Um, but you may lose that privilege um, when we have to file additional charges. Each one of these individuals that we charged, of course, is awaiting trial on other charges, right? So they're in there from um, things uh, spreading from um, manslaughter, murder uh, in the second degree, and um, attempted robbery. So now they have an additional set of charges that we'll ha all have to deal with. So um, I do have this video. It's a short video. It's about 20 seconds long. The piece that I want you to know about this is that the beating that this jail guard took went on for about 90 seconds. We're not going to give you all of that. Uh, we're giving you enough that you can kind of see um, what he experienced and why we think it's important for uh, us to stand in front of you today and say, this really, really must stop. Um, the operations of this jail must improve. So if you could go ahead and go ahead and play that for us. What you're going to see is um, our jail guard on the top rail here. Um, in the administrative segregation unit. And he has to come down the stairs when he realizes um, what's about to happen to him. You can see the assault occur. A third man jumps in and you'll see a fourth come in. Again, that goes on uh, for about 90 seconds before individuals come in uh, to assist and break up um, the assault on this jail guard. I've watched that, of course, numerous times, and it just really makes me angry uh, to, to watch it because um, that individual is there protecting all of us, protecting other inmates, and deserves um, better than that. And I get really angry when I see um, in his face what he knows is about to happen. When he's on that top rail, um, he's got to worry. Um, he knows what's coming. So in the administrative segregation unit, one inmate is supposed to be out at a time. And it is this jail guard's duty to go into that pod and to make sure um, that everyone is behaving as they should, that everyone is in their cells where they're supposed to be, one inmate is out at a time, and what he realizes is that one inmate was actually hiding, uh, lying in wait for him. Two others were hiding um, in the bathroom. When he's up on that top rail is when he realizes that he's in trouble. And um, he simply must 
make that long walk down that corridor and walk down those stairs and um, face those inmates. Now, none of us, um, none of us should have to do a job that puts you in that kind of uh, safety risk. This really, really must change. We must find a way to better protect our guards, um, and we must find a better way to make sure other inmates are safe inside this facility. So these are the points that I wanted to make today. I'll go ahead and play this um, again for you so you can, you can kind of see what I'm talking about, and that is um, watch when he's on that top rail. And he's got to worry about um, the fight being on that top rail, right? So he actually has to go down the stairs where it's a better encounter than if he found himself in a fight on that top rail. I always appreciate when someone whispers in my ear that I made a mistake, um, so I can tell you about it. Um, these, Tyrone Willard is the other individual um, that's actually charged with two separate assaults. He is the individual that I told you um, committed assault as well earlier in August against a different jail guard, and that one um, is in the packet of charges that you'll have. Um, but I had said earlier, uh, mistakenly, that was Sneed. Willard is the individual that's been charged with two separate assaults today. Look, I, I want to um, thank uh, Sheriff Sharp, not just for being here today, but for um, assigning two detectives um, at this jail. They've been there for a long time. I know we've been working on that uh, project um, for years now. So these are, these are not new assignments to the jail. They've been there for um, years. And um, those two detectives, those two um, individuals that work for the sheriff, um, were really critical in helping us uh, put this together um, for us uh, to know about this and to get charges brought to you today. So um, I want to thank Mike, I want to thank his crew um, for doing the hard work in that jail um, of trying to keep people safe. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to the Sheriff if you have any comments you'd like to make. What you just saw in this video was a corrections officer that was trying to do his job. That was a coordinated effort by individuals inside the facility to assault that guard. He was a target. Their inmates have been charged, as Gina just said. We're going to transport those individuals to other facilities, separate them. But I want this to be a message to all the other inmates that are in that facility. And if you do this again, you will be charged. We will present the case to the prosecutor and I'm hopeful that she will charge like she did today and we'll find a place for you to go. You won't stay in Jackson County. If I have to move you to the boot heel of Missouri, I'll move you there. Sheriff, tell us what kind of a problem this is because I was in court the other day and I was listening to some of the people there, some of the folks that work for you, mm -hmm. talking about assaults on the, <clears throat> the people who work in the jail. Can you talk about what a big problem it is? It, it, has become, it has become more of a problem. It was more of a problem until just recently when we charged these individuals here. Word spread in the jail that now they're being charged. And, and to be quite honest with you, I, I was asking for a murder conspiracy charges because these men laid in wait and we couldn't put the charges together. They, if they would have got up to that guy on that rail, they would have thrown him over that rail, and there's no telling what would have happened. Sheriff, the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the uh, administrative segregated unit, these are inmates who already have exhibited problems in the jail, correct? Yes, sir. Is it standard operating procedure to have just one corrections officer on that block? That would be a question that you need to direct to the jail and the county executive's office. I do not know the operating procedures of the jail. 
I can only talk to you in reference to what my operating procedures are as a sheriff. Madam Prosecutor, do you know the answer to that? I don't. Um, again, I would I would um, direct you to uh, Joe P Piccinini at the jail or Frank White. Um, they are responsible for running the jail. How many inmates were there besides the four? Were there others on that unit at that time? Well, there, there were several that were already in the cells, but those four had somehow, and they're still we're still looking into this, had been able to get out of the cell somehow and then hide so that they were in behind the camera, out of sight of the camera uh, view and from the guard's view. You could see the one got in behind a pillar and you can hide in those, you can hide in the, in the cracks of the facility. But they're all supposed to be in their cells, correct? Except you, for when they're let out by the guard? And there should only be one at a time. What for? A four route. Did you talk to the guard after before filing the charges? I did not. Uh, we we talked to the guard in regards to the investigation. Uh, at that at the time of the incident, he refused medical treatment, but then later determined that he needed to go to the hospital and he was transported to the hospital, and that's what led to more of these charges. So I can let Gene talk to about speaking. Point of the question here is: Did he radio for backup? Did he call for help? Yeah, you can see um, on the video, you can see him kind of show his radio to the inmates below who are already taunting him to let them know um, that he was calling for help and he was also trying to get the attention of another individual uh, behind the glass to get their help. He had made radio contact. There was, there was help coming, but the way the jail's built, you know, they got to come up the elevator up the stairs and it took a while. And they're already short-handed, so they were they were pu pulling people together to come assist. Can you talk about the extent of his injuries? I can. Um, so that's the grade of the charge is based on the extent of those injuries. Um, you know, he had his reasons why he wanted to stay and, and finish out his shift, even after experiencing that. Um, you know, he's um, my understanding. Of this jail guard um, is that he works really hard. Um, he works overtime. Um, a lot of overtime, and he didn't want to lose his overtime. And, and so he just kind of suffered through it. And, and so he had a series of bruises. He was beat up, you know, I mean, you saw it. So basically he was beat up, um, lots of bruises. Um, I think had a, um, a uh, jammed finger, broken pinky. Um, so he got lucky that that was the extent of the injuries on this particular incident. Um, you know. My charge is based on the grade of those injuries because that's what the law provides. Um, but it doesn't satisfy um, at the level of, of uh, anger that I feel when I watch this um, because it just, this shouldn't happen. It, it just shouldn't happen. And it continues to happen. And, and that's why we're here today is to tell you um, we're really fed up. We're fed up with it. And we, we want better. Um, we simply want better. This occurred on the fifth floor. You hear a lot about the fifth floor of the jail. Um, when all of us um, in this community are really educated about the fifth floor of the jail, uh, we have a problem. Is it the Thunderdome? What call it? <laughs> the, the Thunderdome? I don't know that it's been called the Thunderdome, but um, it's got a lot of nicknames. But it is the fifth floor is where a lot of very dangerous inmates are housed. Um, administrative segregation, as you pointed out earlier, is a um, special uh, cell block for individuals who have exhibited uh, discipline problems already. And so, um, you know, we can all be the gauge, I guess, of, of how okay that video is. It's not okay, and we can do better, and we must, uh, we must demand better. Is that the standard policy of the county, that this guy's OT would be in jeopardy because he's suffered an on-the-job injury that would have cost him hours on his shift? You know? well, well, what, Mike, in regards to that, if he was injured, he couldn't go to work, so he, he wouldn't be able to fulfill his obligation to do the duty. So if he's injured, they're going to pull him back and maybe provide the limited duty or send him home until he's, uh, until he's released from a doctor's uh, care. So, so he was trying to protect his future OT? <clears throat> Pretty much. Do you know how many guards have been assaulted this year? I don't have an exact number, and we can. do you want to run from when they're being spit and urine thrown on them? Or do you want to go from physical assaults? Which physical one? Assault. Which numbers do you want? Physical assaults. Physical assaults. I can get those numbers for you. 
The other is important too. Can you get those numbers as well? Because sure. that is an assault as, as well, isn't it? Yes. But those are the ones that you you, you stopped. Uh, so yeah, the, the corrections, under Chapter 80, corrections has the opportunity to write their own ordinance violations, as you're aware of, and they can present those to the county counselor's office and then present them to the municipal court now for the county for charges. Uh, we're, we're still down there taking the more violent assaults and, and, and serious cases, death investigations, things like that. These assaults, though, that uh, are going to be broken down between what has been criminally charged and what is handled administratively in the jail, because not all of them get criminally charged, correct? You're Spitting right. Or something. You're right. A lot of things they can do inside the jail through administrative segregation. Uh, they have privileges that can be taken away and things like that. That's how they handle the in-house issues of the minor, the more minor assaults, if you want to call them that. I'm just and making some, sure that we and have some a of breakdown of what's been criminally charged and what's been handled and, and understand the levels. This is a state level charge, but there's also an opportunity to charge things um, at the municipal level, and that happens as well. Mm -hmm. Are these four guys on their way to the Boot Hill? Or, or no, but somewhere. they're on their way somewhere. They're, and they, but and they will be the, together, and I right, think that's I'm important for you to know. Are they out of the jail now? They are being arraigned at 1.30. Oh, they charged, and then uh, they will be transported by sheriff's deputies. Uh, I'm taking, my guys are taking them to the other facilities. So if this happened back in August, and today we're sitting at the end of September, where are these guys been since? Fifth floor. On the fifth floor, right. Where so do we expect? After the assault, was the guard still mm -hmm. you know, up there on the fifth floor, the same one? I think he's been assigned somewhere else. That's my understanding of, of where he was moved. That'd be a question for the, for the jail folks. Is your hope that by putting these charges out there that a culture in the jail is going to change? Absolutely. How, how Absolutely. the charges do so, look, we've tried a variety of things. Um, you know, both Mike and I were part of a, a huge operation earlier this year um, where we, we asked for the FBI's help and they were willing to give it to us and we were grateful for it. Um, prior to that, though, we had worked uh, pretty repeatedly with the U.S. Attorney's Office um, in trying to get the right kind of charges for the right conduct. Um, I don't know we put every kind of focus and attention that we have available to us to put on this jail. And I'm frustrated because, um, you know, I, I really don't want to be in a situation where it's necessary to file charges because guards are getting beat in the jail. And it's just, that culture must change. And so that, if, if anything, we're trying to send a message uh, to the inmates in the jail that, um, we want to know about those. I want to know when that happens. I want to be able to evaluate the case, and I want to be able to bring a charge um, when that is appropriate. So, um, so take notice. Is it a staffing issue? Why the guards like the it decrease in staffing? Why there's been an increase in guards? I think I think it's pretty layered. Um, I think there's a lot of issues. Um, staffing is one of those things that's been talked about um, quite a bit, and it's, you cannot argue that staffing is a, is a very, very serious issue. Overcrowding is an issue in that jail as well, um, and overcrowding stems from, you know, people are being placed um, in, in every kind of nook and cranny that they can find in the jail. So that common area that you saw in that video did not have uh, individuals' uh, beds pitched in that common area of that particular pod because it's administrative segregation. But generally, there are beds pitched um, in, those, in those areas, which is going to cause you a problem, right? It wasn't designed uh, to have beds there. And um, the jail is just, um, it's just packed. And I'm going to say, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. There are a lot of good people that are employed by Jackson County that work in that corrections facility, and they deserve better than what they're getting right now. They really do. And... Believe it or not, not every inmate in there is disruptive. There are inmates in there that follow the rules. This is a message to those inmates that can't follow the rules. If you don't follow the rules, you will be charged again, and you will be moved out of this facility. The, All right, a couple uh, more questions. The, yep. just, just a quick one. Just the, the, the guard in the other incident you mentioned, how is he or she doing? Do they have no, not badly hurt, um, but another charge that we felt was important, even though it's a misdemeanor, for it to arise um, to the state level. 
From that FBI uh, investigation where you guys asked for help, what came of that? That's where the charges were filed against the corrections officers for civil rights, civil rights violations against inmates. This here again helps us help the corrections officers because if I'm getting hit like that, I'm probably going to come unglued on a guy and we don't want that to happen for the corrections officers. We want them to be working in a safe environment so they aren't put in a situation where they feel they have to defend themselves and maybe over defend themselves in a case where then we have to bring charges against them. Has the guard uh, been doing counseling or anything along those lines to avoid a situation like that? And to your question earlier, though, I think there have been um, four or five individuals that were indicted um, at the federal level after that um, FBI um, kind of take down of the jail earlier in the year. Gee, you said a minute ago, we're fed up. Yeah. Fed up with what? We're fed up with um, probably um, each of our weeks here at the county being filled with the jail as a problem. You know, I mean, I don't know too many prosecutors and too many sheriffs that don't operate their local county jail that have to spend so much time and energy on a facility that um, should not be first and foremost in our minds every day, every step of every day. How so, many hours do you think we spend talking to each other a week over the jail? I, I, I can't begin to tell you. I mean, it's a, it's a significant portion of, of our time and um, I guess that's the that's just the the level of frustration is okay. um, it's I want to see it improve we want to start seeing an improvement of that facility the, the, suicide, the, the suicide in the jail on Monday yes was that uh, a management problem as well do you think we are not going to comment on that right now it's still under investigation and any death that occurs in the jail my office will look at whether it's a suicide or uh, whatever it may be uh, so that case will be coming to me um, I've made a request to, to review that case in full, but I don't have that documentation yet. In many counties, the Sheriff's Department does control the jail. Is that something that you think would be a good idea for Jackson County that you would be looking to do? No. <laughs> you just want to, you know, you said, you mentioned your frustration with, uh, certainly with, with inmates who assault guards. You yeah. sort of hinted that you are, are frustrated with how the, how the jail is run, staffing, perhaps the physical, I mean, does your frustration just run the, run the gamut You're with county officials as well as uh, the inmates who might be running wild? <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 it's the whole, it's, it's, it's everything, right? I've been, I've been extremely frustrated um, that cell phones find their way into the jail. I'd like to just reiterate and underscore how dangerous it is to have a cell phone in the jail. I know who's in there. I've asked for several of them to be placed there and to remain there and I continue to argue with judges that they should remain until their trial is complete. And I know that when a cell phone is in the hands of the wrong person, it can cause harm to my community. Not just to the administration of justice on that one case I have, uh, but to my entire community. So. Um, when I'm concerned about cell phones being in the jail, um, I'm concerned about con other types of contraband that come into the jail, I'm concerned about inmates' safety and health and security, and I'm concerned about guards' um, security. I, I don't, there's just, everything is a concern <laughs> at this point. You know, it's, it, the whole thing is a concern. And um, so we continue to look at it from its, um, what can we expect uh, of this facility? What, what's the level of capacity um, that this jail can manage and what is simply over its capaci capacity? What can it not do? And I think we need to get to that answer so as, um, as a county um, we can better inform, um, from our perspectives, we can inform um, other county officials and try and work to better policies and um, you know, better answers for this community. It seems like you're saying the jail is being run poorly. Well, I'm telling you that I'm filing a charge against four inmates that I've already charged with beating a guard. And I showed you the video, and I didn't show you the whole 90 seconds, um, but it, it, it angers me. So I'm telling you I'm angered by it because I want to do better um, than that. 
when the prosecutor has concerns about cell phones or concerns about inmate safety, guard safety, all those concerns that you just listed, it seems like you think that there's a problem there. We absolutely have a problem. We absolutely have a problem. We're, we are starting to discuss it, though, in its, um, in its bigger context so that all county officials are really kind of pushing their chair up to the table so we can address it. That's a good step. I want to um, hasten that discussion, however. It's time to move along. So with that, we're going to go ahead and leave you all. Thank you very much for being here today. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.